What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Primary Source walkthrough. This time, we have W.E.B. Du Bois, The Negro Nation Within a Nation. This is the second time, I think, that we have talked um, about uh, Du Bois, uh, who is a, a pivotal figure uh, in the very early, early um, civil rights uh, fight uh, in, in this country. I, we saw him... Uh, briefly when we read about the Jim Crow era, uh, and now here we are uh, in the New Deal, and he's back. Uh, du Bois's ideas are going to persist for a long time, uh, and for, for reasons that uh, maybe this document can explain, Du Bois is often written off uh, in the uh, kind of the main, you know, K through 12 uh, level teaching of uh, history uh, because Booker T. Washington is much more palatable. And uh, since you read the uh, Atlanta exposition speech uh, and you read Du Bois' uh, Men of the Niagara Movement, I think you can, you can see why Washington would be a bit more palatable, uh, especially to white audiences. Uh, du Bois is more of a challenge where uh, I mean, if you remember Washington, uh, his argument in the uh, Atlanta exposition speech was that uh, black men and women needed to just go along with what the whites wanted uh, and eventually earn their trust. Du Bois is not going to say that. Um, he didn't say it in the Men of the Niagara movement, and actually uh, he is going to uh, offer a more radical idea uh, here uh, in this piece. So, let's put it into uh, context. I, we have to think about the New Deal here. And to Du Bois and other um, African Americans, the New Deal was a, it was a good idea, but it disproportionately favored whites over blacks. And what he's getting at is that the, the programs that the New Deal uh, put into place were uh, very uh, prone to discriminatory practices. So some of the jobs that are uh, created by the WPA, the Triple C, um, and some of the other alphabet organizations uh, excluded black um, men and women uh, from uh, jobs. Um, as he, as the introduction says here, you know, last hired, first fired. And, uh, Du Bois is, has reached his end point here. Uh, he is so thoroughly fed up, uh, with what he has seen that his suggestion, um, is going to be a departure from, you know, a working within the system uh, to creating the his own system or uh, have black America create their own system. Um, because he had come to the realization uh, that uh, integration uh, was not a, a thing that was going to be possible, uh, at least in the way uh, that he... Uh, would expect it to go. And, and think about the other people that um, this now puts him in conversation with. I mean, now we can kind of see the influence of Marcus Garvey to some extent. We can see some influence of Alan Locke, who we read uh, last week. Uh, there's, there, there's something to be said for that. So, let's jump into the source itself and uh, see what Du Bois has to say. So, he says that in this broader and more intelligent democracy, we can hope for the progressive softening of the asperities and normalities of race prejudice. And we can hope that race prejudice gets better, that it, it stops being such a problem. But we cannot hope for its early and complete disappearance. So he's saying we can hope that it gets better, but I just don't think he's saying that it's going to go away anytime soon, or it may never go away. It may get better, and we can hope that it gets better, but maybe it's not going away. 
He continues, the place of the Negro will be an increasing, uh, be, will be increasingly a matter of human choice, a willingness to recognize ability across the barriers of race, of putting fit Negroes in places of power and authority by public opinion. He says, essentially, that black people will be better off if they are able to have some say in the shape of government. Um, in the same, uh, the, the same sorts of control over industry and capital, you know, business and money, that whites have. And if they have access to that, and they have access to... Uh, to that control of industry and capital, then equality might indeed work its way, uh, work its way out. But what he is noticing is he's noticing um, that uh, the, the this just isn't happening for Black Americans. He continues, um, Negroes and other colored folk, uh, nevertheless exist in larger and growing numbers. Slavery, prostitution to white men, theft of their labor and goods have not killed them and cannot kill them. They are growing in intelligence and dissatisfaction. They occupy strategic positions within nations and beside nations amid valuable raw materials and on the highways of future expansion. Now, he says, despite this, Despite all of this, and he continues on the same theme in the next couple of paragraphs, that white people do not seem to want black people to be a part of this society at all. And he starts that thought here by saying, For a nation with this start in culture and efficiency to sit down and await the salvation of a white god is idiotic. What he's saying here is we can't wait for white people to make up their minds about us anymore. Look at us. We have all of this. We have built all of this for ourselves. We are better educated. There are more of us. We have some purchase power. And why are we letting this go to waste? Because white people won't let us be a part of the society. We need to develop an economic nation within a nation. Able to work through inner cooperation, to found its own institutions, to educate its genius, and at the same time, without mob violence or extremes of race hatred, to keep in helpful touch and cooperate with the mass of the nation. He's calling for a separate black society. Because, at this current point, either we do that, or there is no hope for us. We have been systematically excluded from this society, he is saying. And the only way that we are ever going to be a part of it is if we create our own society that exists independently of white society, but cooperates for the whole of the nation. So he says this new, that this other philosophy, uh, that I, I think he's kind of alluding to, to Washington in some sense. To scatter, suppress, wait, escape. We can't do that anymore. Um, he says, quote, There are even many of our educated young leaders who think because the Negro problem is not in evidence where there are few or no Negroes, this indicates a way out. They think that the problem of race can be settled by ignoring it and suppressing all reference to it. They think that we only have to wait in silence for the white people to settle the problem for us, and finally and predominantly, they think that the problem of 12 million Negro people, mostly poor, ignorant workers, is going to be settled by having their more educated and wealthy classes gradually and continually escape from their race into the mass of the American people, leaving, to rest, leaving the rest to sink, suffer, and die. So what's he saying here? What he's saying is he's saying that there are some among us who say, look, uh, we can settle this problem for race once and for all by never talking about it again. And I put 2020 much um, with the question mark in the, uh, in the margin there because I've heard so many people say um, recently 
especially recently, that to even bring up race, to talk about race, is racist in and of itself. I think that's a ridiculous idea. Uh, I think it's very clear that race is a conversation that the United States needs to continue to have because it's not it's not said yet. Uh, the, or the final word has not been said yet. I don't know if it ever will be, uh, but until it does, it's a conversation that needs to continue. In any case, he's also saying that the only way out is to leave our blackness behind. Or at least th this is the philosophy that he's railing against. Leave our blackness behind and just be American. And if we do that, this other, not Du Bois philosophy, but th th this other thinking says that we'll, we'll be fine. And then everybody else is just, well, they didn't come along for the ride. They get to fail. Now, I think that, you know, th this concern is uh, a valid one. You know, it, it, it's one thing uh, to, you know, want to uh, kind of blend in, but you know, at the same time, um, blackness, the status of blackness, is uh, the way in which the, the definition of blackness developed in the United States is very much at the control of white people. Think about slavery and think about the Jim Crow era and, and think about that uh, in American history. And, and what you, what comes out of that is you have a, a set of legal principles that define what blackness is all the way back in the 17th century, you know, you have laws in Virginia that say blackness is the color of slavery, essentially. It, you have decisions like Dred Scott that says black people cannot be citizens of the United States. Uh, you have uh, the Plessy v. Ferguson decision that we saw earlier in this semester uh, that says that... Uh, Segregation is appropriate um, because, well, as long as it's separate but equal. And it, 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 the, the status of second class, of, of not fully American, has been set up by government predominated by whites. So Du Bois is saying... Why are we leaving behind our blackness when this blackness has been foisted on us in the first place? Why, why are we leaving behind this identity? We, he, he's railing against this idea that blacks must become more like whites in order to be successful. They can't just be who they are. And he says this in the next paragraph. He says, For slavery and exploitation that reduced Negroes to their present level, or at any rate hindered them from rising, the white world is to blame. It's a powerful statement. He continues, That there exists today a chance for the Negroes, to organize a cooperative state within their own group by letting Negro farmers feed Negro artisans and Negro technicians guide Negro home industries and Negro thinkers to plan this integration of cooperation while Negro artists dramatize and beautify the struggle, economic independence can be achieved. To doubt that this is a possibility is to doubt the essential humanity and the quality of brains of the American Negro. Now, you might be thinking, and Du Bois already has a, a uh, already has you in mind. You might be thinking, well, this sounds a lot like segregation. Well, he says, well, no sooner is this proposed than a great fear sweeps over older Negroes. They cry, no segregation, no further yielding to prejudice and race separation. 
Yet any planning for the benefit of American Negroes on the part of a Negro intelligentsia is going to involve organized and deliberate self-segregation. There are plenty of people in the United States who would be only too willing to use a plan to use such a plan as a way to increase the legal and customary segregation between the races. This is a threat which many Negroes see is no mere mirage. What of it? It must be faced. We have to we have to face this fear. He's saying I think Look, we're already segregated. They've already excluded us from this society. Even in the North. And it's especially bad in the South. But here in 1936, it's very clear to W.E.B. Du Bois that the United States has no place for a black man or a black woman that they want us segregated and separate. So if they're going to keep us segregated, then we have to form our own society. That we have this within us to do. And you shouldn't doubt that. Now, what's interesting is that uh, the the way in which history develops, and, you know, over the next... A uh, twenty years. I mean, a lot's going to happen in the next twenty years. The depression's going to continue. Uh, World War II happens, uh, but after World War II, things start to change, and we're going to notice that, especially in the fifties. And I, Du Bois's ideas aren't going to go away, but the the strategy is not going to be Du Bois's strategy. So, you know, don't think that Du Bois' strategy here is the, the ultimate uh, winner of, the, uh, of blacks in the 30s. And clearly there's some divide here. And that is something I want to uh, point your attention to. That th there's nothing monolithic uh, or, you know, one-sided about the civil rights movement. It's a, a discourse. It, it, it's several voices coming together and arguing over what the best, best path forward is. Um, which is something you need to keep in mind uh, that, you know, for every Martin Luther King, there's a John Lewis. They disagreed on a lot of things, um, especially about uh, about strategy and uh, the timeliness of uh, of certain things. In, in fact, on the day of the uh, I have a dream speech, John Lewis was planning on giving a just an absolute uh, firebomb of a speech um, about the United States and, and the government doing uh, nothing to, to stop violence against black men and women. Uh, and somebody pleaded with him that this is not the event that we wanted you to do this at. Um, and he ended up rewriting the speech. Uh and it's not just, you know, the SCLC, which is King, and SNCC, which is Lewis. You have the Nation of Islam, which is a different thing entirely. Uh, you have the Black Panthers. Uh, th th there's so much around the discourse of civil rights. Uh, and we should pay attention to that now, here, again, when we're talking about Du Bois, so we, we know the best way forward. So... Um, all that said, let's wrap this up. Uh, this is already approaching 20 minutes, uh, which I didn't expect for this uh, for this source. But uh, I want you to keep in mind that the New Deal is not a panacea for all things in the United States. And clearly Du Bois is bringing that to our attention. So much so that he is saying that it is time for us to separate, uh, for, for black America to, not separate's the wrong word, but to... Um, realize that our situation is not bound to get much better. We've been segregated. We've been cut, cut off. So let's make our own society out of, of this opportunity that has been foisted upon us. So uh, I hope that helps with this source. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, happy to answer them for you. And I will see you on the next one, folks. Be good to yourselves. Hang in there. Be safe.